this round of footy, this round 20 was just extraordinary. We keep talking about this ladder. We keep talking about who can qualify and who can't. And Bucks, now you know the folly of trying to do a ladder predictor because it's just not worth it. Do it this well, I reckon I picked the hardest year to try and do one yeah, as well. The top three sides losing, of course. And then you've got the Giants who continue on the run. Carlton, who six weeks ago were gone for a month. It's just... It's a beautiful place to be right now. And, and outside of the eight, the two sides that are, have got the you know better than 50-50 win, win ratio yeah. in the last 10 weeks is, is Sydney and Richmond. It's awesome. And, and, they're, and they're, they're somewhat on the charge. You know, Richmond were stopped in their tracks by Melbourne on the weekend, but they've, they've, they've shown some really good signs. Gold Coast had the big win and they're still hanging yeah. on. And then Geelong, who we thought yeah. probably the only team that could win it from outside the top four a couple of weeks ago, and now all of a sudden they're in trouble because they play Port Adelaide on Saturday night, which is a huge game. Oh, this game's Everywhere. So, right, what, what heaps of questions came out of the round. You kick us off, Bucks. Well, after Friday, and the, listen, wait for the last two words here. Are Carlton the most balanced team in the Premiership race? Ooh. Who would have thought that? Ooh. Who would have thought that eight weeks ago? Because their football in the last six weeks has been next level. And obviously, three weeks ago, you beat Port Adelaide by 50 points. Now you beat the top side by you know, by three goals, and you look pretty strong throughout that game now. Yes, Collingwood had their chances, but Carlton definitely deserved that win. Mm. That's the last six weeks' profile for them. Yeah, yeah. But their points against has been consistent. They've always been. They've they've maintained a top four defensive profile, but they were through that nine weeks in the middle of the year. They kicked 150 odd against West Coast. Mm. Their eight losses, they couldn't kick over 60 points. Yeah. Now they're averaging over. Now they're averaging around 120 in the last six okay. weeks, and they've come up against some fierce opposition. Well, there's only one window that you need to be worrying about uh, in this season, and that is the premiership window. So tracking them from where they were to where they are now should get uh, Carlton supporters excited. Yeah. So that's round 13. Only West Coast and North had kicked more points. Yeah. At that point, over half, well, pretty much halfway through the season at round 13. So defensively above the line, which yeah, bottom minimum, yep. you've got to be above that line. So but they're at the wrong end of that. Uh, so they're fifth it. there. They're fifth in the in the competition defensively. Then we move into round 17. They've come up to fourth defensively, and they've and they've um, improved defensively they've as leap, well. And then they've leapfrogged over four teams offensively, and they've gone one up defensively. Next one, yep. we take the current day, and they're tracking <laughs> their trajectory. It's a great is heading across. So their defence, they have not compromised on their defence, which is why. I Ask the question about yeah. balance. Yeah. They've got their stoppage game going. Yep. They've got their contested ball game going. There's no doubt that Chera's had a really mm. consistent year, but he's missed some games and then went out last um, on Friday night and was covered by Paddy Dow coming in. Yeah. Cripps has missed games. Yep. Mackay's out. Silvani's been in and out. Uh, Kennedy's out. Even so spread. They've been, and Hewitt's come back in. They've been able to maintain with different personnel across the board, and they're as balanced as any as nearly any side. I put Collingwood and Brisbane as the most mm. balanced sides. Yep. I think Port Adelaide have to improve their defence. Yep. Melbourne, I reckon, are starting to find that balance. Carlton are there in that mix. Good for fans. Good for Carlton fans to look at that. They're heading into the green window where you need mm. to be. Um, Collingwood, just a little point on Collingwood. So from a ground ball point of view, this is the only thing right now... You know, the last four weeks, we're big on trying to settle yourself in these last four weeks and yeah. get your side. This is the one concern for them. So they were double the next side. After the first 17 rounds of the footy, they were double the next side in ground balls. Yeah. They're now at 17. So whether that is a commitment to this helter-skelter back-half play and let's, you know, we're all on board with that because it looks great and everyone's enjoying it and it's getting spoken up, maybe they've forgotten about some of the fundamentals here, which is a nice little reminder for them. A little sharpen up, yeah. And, I, and I, think, I don't think the health of the group's been great. Beyond the scenes, I think a few of them been, had the flu. Oh, we know yeah, different teams go through different things, but uh, uh, you know, every time you're not going to be always up and about. So they've been up for a long period of time. Giants have been up for a long time. The they have, yeah. What do you I got for us? Have we been asleep on the Giants? And mm. remember, let's go back to the commentary or the narrative over the off-season. Yep. Coming into the year, the Giants were going to be the basket case of the AFL. What was the AFL going to do with the Giants? Obviously, mm. Adam Kingsley had the job from hell, supposedly. Well, everything we've heard about... Adam Kingsley uh, is has been positive, you know, since he came into the job. Uh, they've and obviously they've been able to create a great winning streak now. They've beaten some good sides in amongst that day. Obviously the Bulldogs are there. Melbourne uh, a few weeks early probably shouldn't have won the Melbourne game up in Alice Springs, but they did win the game. Yep. Um, Adam Kingsley early in the season case. <laughs> This is before the stress ball. This is pre-stress ball, Adam Kingsley. <laughs> uh, it's amazing what a turnaround of a few yeah. wins will do you, Gaz. Yeah. Oh, well, there it is. Yeah, it is. I, reckon he, I reckon he would have had some moments in those last seven weeks. But we Look don't... We don't oh, he's up and about. 
<laughs> we don't say, yeah, you know, it's neither, it's never all good or all bad, but yeah. winning, winning makes it look a whole lot better, doesn't it? And they've been able to do it in all conditions. They've won in nine different venues yeah. This, yeah. this year. So yeah. they've been able to travel to different places and they've won the close games. They've shown real grit. They play four quarters of footy. They don't beat themselves. Mm. And that's a that's a that's you know the first step towards playing so, winning footy. Is there and a little bit of Collingwood about them? Is there a little yeah, bit of Collingwood? Yeah, well, the, well they're, little, they're list demographic. So where their list was, a lot of players in their prime in their careers compared to Collingwood at the start of 2022. Mm. So they've actually looked deeper into their list. You go, well, actually, no, this is a list ready to hit their prime. And... I think Adam Kingsley's been able to bring more of that turnover game back, which we haven't seen in the Giants since 2016, guys. And this has been a great strength, Des. On the weekend, they were struggling around the clearances. But what they were able to do after half-time, just even up the clearances, and they're just a superior turnover team to most teams in the competition. Mm. They're the best turnover team defensively. So have a look at this. They were clearly outnumbered on this situation if you looked at the wide shot, and they just shut it down. And mm. then, this is the very next play, they just turn the ball over and then bang, they just take off. Now, they had players like Bedford come back in. Daniels is a terrific player. Lloyd's been fantastic as well. Well, I think they've been able to... They've built their game from a, from a really solid defence. Yep. So their back seven yep. has been able to... And they, Himmelberg's gone back there for, for the most part. Taylor's stood up and been strong. And they've got enough run out of there as well. I, I, they've built it from the back. And then when you think about their front two thirds, you got Toby Green, who's one of the most dangerous highest rated forward, forward in the competition. You got Tom Green around the midfield, Canilio, who's having a sneaky mm. good year. Mm. You got Kelly, and in Whitfield, who adds that yeah, top end class. But they're they're now you know very experienced players. Daniels to that as well, yeah. who's one of the most effective small forwards. You've got a lot of strike power that's in the middle and forward. So if you can hold up down back the way they have. Mm. They, they, they get their game going, they'll beat anyone. Well, Sam Taylor, highest rated defender in the competition as well. And you need to find one, don't you? Yep. And who would have thought Kieran Briggs yep. are going to find... Yep. Even Adam Kingsley was honest about this. They say he wasn't in their plans no. at the start of the year. So he has came in to be... Yeah, you know, with Max Gorn, the best ruckman in the last 10 games, guys. Played 10 games this year, so you need that. Giants are well and truly going to be very dangerous come September. So, so have we been asleep on them? You think they can do some damage? Yeah, absolutely they can, okay. because they're playing the game that wins finals. Well, have they gone past the dogs then? So the dogs just become a bit of a one-trick pony here. They've no, got to yeah. add a few layers to what they're doing. Clearance reliance, guys. Uh, you know, Sam Taylor shut down Norton, but if you just purely look at the clearance game, the dogs are at, uh, in danger of being a one-trick pony. So, yeah, plus 15 clearances. The margin was 29 points. Second half, GWS, I even the numbers around the stoppages, guys. What's the margin? You lose 35 points there, or roughly that, and you lose the game of footy. So they need to fix up the turnover game and other parts of their game. Did we see the revenge of the forwards on the weekend, boys? You know, I get excited about this. Yeah. I've been frustrated with these interceptors, these mark from opposition players that have just taken over the joint. Well, I think finally on the weekend we saw the forwards say, no, nah, enough's enough, and they went back at it, and they did it in a couple of different ways. So it started Friday night. Charlie Kerno, who we celebrated on the coverage like no other player, um, was absolutely <laughs> magnificent mm. against Darcy Moore. And he just did it a couple of different ways. He just prepared to stand shoulder to shoulder, end up getting free kicks. Darcy ended up grabbing his jumper. Now, it was a great battle, but there was no Darcy Moore pinging off and taking intercept marks. He we, just couldn't do it. Well, Darcy took, he took four in the first quarter, but then as the game wore on, that definitely turned. Then this guy, James Sisley, who wrecked St Kilda first time around, they, yeah. they had a plan for him. They said, Charman, go with him and play back shoulder. Then Harrison Petty went forward on Noah Boulder, who's been a great intercept player, and just went shoulder to shoulder Good. with him. The He's best. a beautiful kick Colts as well. taking the most intercept yeah. marks yeah. in the comp. And look at this stuff. So this is the difference here, and we'll talk about Melbourne, what's happened from a contested ball. And then Aaliyah, Aaliyah, who's been a hit-up player. Now, I don't know how much of this will take nothing away from the big Texan, because this, this, oh. this is pure. So I just think in the end, and then I was down at Geelong, and I watched how they went about it with Stewart, and we'll talk about Harris Andrews in a moment. Yeah. I think finally they're just going, right, why? why? You know, intercept defenders. We're the blokes with the footy. They're marking our ball. So let's do something about it. I thought on the weekend, first step towards reclaiming your territory, and I loved it.